Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tempe City Council regular council meeting. Time is now, let's see, 6.29 p.m. We apologize for being late. We're just sort of finishing up an executive session, obviously. Last meeting before you get to the uh, end of the year. There's always a few things you got to cover. All right, let's go here to item number one, call to order. Members of the public who attend the meeting physically are asked to maintain distance between other parties and masks are optional for all attendees per city of Tempe policy. Alternatively, members of the public may attend the meeting virtually through Cisco WebEx events by visiting tempe.gov slash council meeting info for more information. Council meetings can also be watched in real time via Cox Cable Channel 11 and at tempe.gov slash tempe11. I'd like to now invite anyone who's able and willing to stand to join me in a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you so much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Next up is item number four, meeting minutes. Tonight I'm going to be assisted by Council Member Garland. Council Member Garland. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the council meeting minutes, item number 4A1. It's been moved by Council Member Garland. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Mayor Adams. Please vote. And Kara, do I have Council Member Hodge or Council Member Keating? No, you do not. Then that item passes five to zero with Council Member Hodge and Council Member Keating absent. Next up, item 4B, acceptance of board commission and committee meeting minutes. Council Member Garland. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to accept the board and commission committee meeting minutes for B1 through 4B7. Second. It's been moved by Council Member Garland and seconded by Vice Mayor Adams. Please vote. And that item also passes five to zero with Council Member Hodge and Council Member Keating absent. Next up, uh, Mayor's announcements. Uh, item 5A1 is the City of Tempe Board and Commission reappointments and new appointments. Uh, I'd like to congratulate all the individuals outlined in item 7A1 on their agenda, on the agenda, on their reappointments to the City of Tempe Arts and Culture Commission, Aviation Commission, Board of Adjustment, Commission on Disability Concerns, Desert Conservation Commission, Family Justice Commission, Human Relations Commission, Library Advisory Board, Parks Recreation, Golf and Double Butte Cemetery Advisory Board, Risk Management Trust Board, Sustainability and Resilience Commission, Technical Code of Advisory Board of Appeals, Transportation Commission, and Veterans Commission. Also, there is one reappointment and five new appointments to the Neighborhood Advisory Commission this evening. Pretty much feel like I read every commission that's currently in statute in the city of Tempe. <laughs> All right, so I just want to also inform everyone that new appointments to remaining openings on the city's boards and commissions are scheduled for the regular council meeting that takes place on January 5th, 2023. Next up, I'll move to item 5B, city manager's reports and announcements. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I'm pleased to have staff come up and give a presentation on the status of the improvements at Clark Park, the park itself, the pool, and the community center. Here's Sean Wagner. Good evening. Hopefully I won't take up too much of your time tonight, but just appreciate you uh, inviting me back down to provide an update on the Clark Park project. Do I got it? Clicker. Got it. Um, this project aligns with most of the council's strategic priorities, but we feel it most closely aligns with that of quality of life, specifically the performance measures of 3.16, 3.17, and 3.34, which talk to the quality of our parks and recreation centers, our community services programs, as well as our new performance measure of community health and well-being. So tonight I'll provide you a brief overview of the timeline, 
the overview and the scope of the project, where we're at to date with each one of the phases, uh, as well as some uh, interesting uh, public art additions uh, that we have in this project. And there's always time for comments and questions at the end, but should you have something along the way, feel free to get my attention and I'm happy to do so. So the project timeline, back in 2021, we completed the final construction designs uh, for this project. Earlier this year, in 2022, we uh, broke ground at the uh, Clark Park. And uh, currently, we're right here at the end of the year, so we're tying up phase one uh, and continuing efforts on phase two, which focus on the community pool, center, park restrooms, and, and some additional parking in the area. So real quickly, uh, a project overview, the phase one scope here, uh, you'll see we've added in shade structures as well as natural shade uh, with the tree planting enhancements. Uh, we're also talking improved park access, ball field and court improvements, uh, the relocating of the community garden, as well as some new site lighting. Um, Phase two, which we're concurrently working on, are the focus on the community pool and uh, center, as well as a new maintenance building for our aquatics maintenance staff. So they will, while our aquatics maintenance staff will work out of this building, it will serve all the pools that we have in Tempe. So we're able to move them out of the Hardy Yard site for uh, future uh, development or use of the city moving forward. Uh, we're also going to continue to focus on parking and street improvements. We're bringing in quite a bit to this park. We understand that that parking needs to be expanded. And we were able to do so without taking away a lot of the parkland just on the periphery of the park. Uh, so excited about that. We'll get to some public uh, art elements. But most importantly tonight, this is a part of the Refresh Tempe. So we're refreshing our parks. And, and we're truly grateful for the support of not only our community, but Mayor, Council, uh, your support and making this project a priority. So we, we do truly appreciate that. Uh, so tonight, pictures talk a thousand words, hopefully I don't, uh, but I'm going to provide you a couple of uh, uh, slides here that are going to just show you what it looked like in concept and where we're at today. So on the, the uh, left-hand side here, we'll start there, we have the community garden. Uh, so up, that's the design on top, and here's where we're at today. Um, as a part of this project, we were actually able to reuse a, a lot of the, manu uh, the, the built shade. So we were able to use the previous playground structure, uh, that shade there, the, the one on the bottom in the blue, uh, that's, we reused that. Uh, and the, the garden has been great to work with that committee. Uh, we've reused the planter boxes that they identified and we've been able to make some uh, necessary additions as well. But uh, all in all, it's, it's coming along quite nice and we expect the garden to open sometime in January. Uh, so truly excited about that. On the right hand side, we have our playground. Um, the playground, that's the heart of the park. This is where folks gather. This is where we build that social infrastructure. We always talk about our built infrastructure, but here we're building social infrastructure uh, relating to our neighbors, meeting new folks and reconnecting with, uh, with others. So we, we truly appreciate this and our parks uh, team has done a terrific job of managing that project. Uh, on the right here, you're gonna see the ball field. This is a field of dreams field. Um, while a part of this project, this actual component was done by our parks maintenance team. So completely in-house. Uh, Mike Clark and his team did a tremendous effort on this field and, and it looks incredible uh, for those little leagues and those other youth sports organizations that use that field. As I mentioned earlier, the built infrastructure, the built shade, we actually took an existing Ramada. We've added some grills. We're gonna put in some new picnic tables, but we, we kept it. It didn't need to be replaced. We were actually able to paint it, make some uh, minor repairs, and uh, again, continue to serve the community as it has uh, throughout its history. Here, we're just gonna see some um, work on the, uh, the site lighting, connecting through the pathways uh, in the park. Again, this is gonna make that park inclusive for all, right? So being able to navigate the park in and out of the park from the east to the west to the north to the south, you'll be able to do that via these sidewalks. Uh, so if you have mobility impairments, you're gonna be able to get it around this park much easier moving forward. Um, here we have the pool. So again, on that bottom picture, I know it doesn't quite look like a pool yet, but we're getting there. Uh, that's going to be our community zero depth entry area. Again, a very inclusive pool uh, for kids of all ages uh, to come out and cool off during the summer. On the right hand side is that auxiliary maintenance building, and that's what it looks like currently. We've got the, uh, the foundation down. We've um, uh, built it out uh, with some of the underground utilities, and we'll be going vertical here within the next month. Uh, phase two. Uh, we've got the parking area, which services not only that Ramada, but the existing dog park that's in the, um, 
uh, in the in the park currently. So that one's underway. So we've added parking there. And then uh, obviously we've got our center, which we're truly excited to get back open. Uh, but we've doubled the programming space there from what we had with the existing facility. And uh, this will eventually be um, a, a huge community connection point uh, moving forward with all the programs, activities and services that we'll have. Uh, Public art in the park. We have had an opportunity not only to add some additional, which I'll get to in a minute, but we uh, were able to reuse. And so Tom Stritch, uh, some of you may know, uh, an artist, he was uh, responsible for the canopy for a growing community, which include both the bicycle parking as well as the shade canopy there. And um, this was done as a part of the Marianne Quarter Neighborhood Grant Program back in 2016. We just relocated it uh, over next to our community garden now, which fits in perfectly with its garden themed elements. The playground, uh, this is truly exciting here. Uh, an artist, Shachi Kali, uh, designed the artwork on the playground surface. So again, a fully accessible playground surface, right? So you've got everybody of all mobility can go out here and integrate or uh, have a good time, but take a look at the, the playground surface. You can jump from flower to flower. Uh, like a bee would. You can follow the earthworm within its tunnel. Uh, again, making the surface itself a playground amenity or a playground feature. Uh, so public art, our arts and culture team did a tremendous job here. On the right hand side, you'll see we have a, another work uh, of public artworks um, and we have a litho mosaic on the bottom. Um, and Nicole Mueller actually is the artist on this one. And she's designed this to reflect the native, uh, sun, the Arizona sunsets, the flora and fauna within the park. So it, when you walk into that center, you're gonna be greeted by that litho mosaic. The integrated glass windows, the infused glass windows at the top will actually allow for some indirect lighting uh, within the center for calming spaces. Uh, and what's really um, nice about this is we're actually using a local glass manufacturer, Meltdown Glass, uh, based in Tempe. They're actually making the glass for this and uh, designing that finished product. So just for a second here, our Office of Communication and Marketing put to, uh, together a really great time last video that'll bring you up to speed only, only about a minute and then we'll um, go ahead and finish this one up. I'll, I'll stall while Eddie's got it. If you wanna hear a dad joke, I got him. But uh, <laughs> I'm hoping maybe Eddie can get this one pulled up. I would say five seconds, Sean, otherwise you're gonna have to go to the dad joke, man. Oh, I got you. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. Eddie, nick of time, man, well done. So here you're looking at the before, as it says here on the picture, this is what we looked like before. Community garden down here on the south. Now we're migrating into the construction. That's the new pool and the auxiliary maintenance building. Uh, here you have the new community center coming into play. Our existing sand volleyball courts, the basketball court got resurfaced. Uh, really cool um, public art there on the playground and our new community garden. All right, and with that, that concludes my presentation. So if you have any questions, comments, I'd love to hear them. Thank you, Sean, much appreciated. Vice Mayor Adams. Yes, thank you for the presentation. I uh, really appreciate it. When I was running for my first election, I was uh, in, in that neighborhood and, and uh, a lot of the um, children were not learning how to swim in the neighborhood uh, because they don't, typically don't have pools there. And uh, as a former lifeguard, that like made me really upset. And so I promised that I would work on getting this uh, pool back into Clark Park as previously we had one. Um, I love the dog park. That's that's awesome. So um, I'm excited to see that again there. Um, I'd love to see pickleball and um, if possible, and I know that that we might be tight on space, but anyway, just mm -hmm. to consider, I know we're pretty far down the road, but, um, and I just, I appreciate staff, uh, making one of my, one of my babies, uh, you know, come to fruition and it's just, it's, this is so exciting and this will transform the neighborhood. It'll also activate the park. Uh, so it's going to completely change the whole dynamics of that park and really be a major asset, uh, to the, to the homeowners in that area and the, and the kids and, and the adults uh, who learned how to swim. 
So I'm just really thankful to staff for uh, making this happen. It looks, it's absolutely beautiful too, what you guys have done with it. And I just really um, thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for making this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Adams, and we appreciate your advocacy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Adams. Councilmember Navarro. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, man, I tell you what, seeing this park from when it first got on, we had to make the hard decision on closing it, taking uh, the pool out. Um, it was a horrible deal. And then really kind of getting it back, knowing that we were going to talk to the community, knowing that, hey, we're going to try to get this park back. You guys did a great job, man. I tell you what, hands down, Sean. Um, I think the improvements are great. Everything looks great. Um, a little bit farther beyond what I thought uh, we were going to do. And it looks absolutely great. The layout, what a great use of space. And um, I have to say that a lot of community involvement on this, you know, from the residents, everybody really engaging on this to make this park what it is today. Um, and it's taking back the park. It's actually taking back the park and putting uses in there that obviously everyone's going to enjoy. So um, really cool deal. One question on the ball fields. How do you guys get them? Did you guys go out there and smooth them out? Tell me you did. Just lie to me. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, it's a complete no. rework of the field. So we put in a dustless entry <clears throat> mix now. Uh, Mike Clark and his team, he takes care of our Diablo Stadium. So we're going back out there with that that crew went out there to rehab this field. Yeah, and that's so, and that's the thing. I mean, and it's with a lot of our parks. And I kind of say this because uh, even where I'm at at Meyer Park, it's starting to get it's it's redo. But I hope that you know, like the soccer fields and the softball fields, can get that redo on the on the ground surface because. It is wonky and various, and it's just sort of the age of our parks. Mm -hmm. um, but just being able to take that, making that field play, looking really professional, really nice for those kids. I mean, they enjoy that because the detail, that means a lot to them when they're playing sports like that. And, and I think that's something you recognize and know. So I appreciate you guys, what you guys are doing. Thank you, Council Member Navarro. Thank you. Anyone else on Council, further comments or questions? <laughs> Seeing none. Thank you, Sean. All appreciate right. it. Great presentation. Thank you. Mr. City Manager, anything else? Yes, one more briefly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to take the opportunity uh, this evening to um, to recognize the career and congratulate uh, Jill Rasmussen on her retirement from the city. Uh, we had a, a retirement uh, get together for her earlier this week. Uh, she uh, is retiring with 33 years of service with the city of Tempe, uh, primarily and I believe exclusively within what was originally called the Tempe After School Enrichment Program, or TASEP, and now is well known as the Kids Zone uh, Enrichment Program. Uh, and I've had, uh, over the course of my time working here, a number of occasions to work with Jill Rasmussen, and, and there are uh, no one I know who cares more about the welfare of Tempe's kids more than Jill. Um, and she dedicated her entire career just to that, to, to the, the betterment of, of the children of the city of Tempe uh, through our Kids Zone program, and we're going to miss her a lot. I know she has some really uh, exciting plans uh, for the future, including trying to stay active uh, within the city of Tempe and the things we do. But I'm uh, very excited for her, for her future, and congratulations, Jill, on 33 uh, outstanding years with the city of Tempe. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. One more, actually. Oh, Vice Mayor was okay. uh, kind enough to remind me that today is also uh, Don, Donna uh, Sullivan Hancock's last day with the city of Tempe. Donna started in engineering. She currently works in community development. She spent, I want to say, at least the last year, if not two years, <coughs> filling in in a deputy role in community development and really bridging uh, a lot of time uh, during that time uh, to, to get to uh, help uh, in that uh, in that enhanced capacity as a deputy. Uh, Donna has an outstanding reputation as being someone who gets the job done uh, here at the city of Tempe and has worked tirelessly during her time here as well. So in a similar vein, but in a different uh, profession, we also appreciate, acknowledge, and, and, and uh, wish nothing but the best to Donna in all of her future pursuits. So two, uh, two really outstanding uh, employees, both uh, retiring in the same week. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Thank you, Mr. City Manager, really appreciate it. All right, next up is item number six, public appearances. According to the Arizona Open Meeting Law, the City Council may only discuss matters listed elsewhere on this agenda for discussion and legal action. The purpose of the open call to the public is to allow individuals to address the City Council on any issue within the jurisdiction of the City Council. Public appearances shall be limited to an aggregate total of 60 minutes. 
No person shall speak more than once, and there is a limit of three minutes per speaker. Speakers present at the podium must state their name and city of residence and provide a comment card. Speaker card. Members of the public shall refrain from making personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks and from becoming boisterous while addressing the city council or while attending the hearing. Speakers will be taken first come, first serve in the order in which the cards are received. Speakers' visual aids and appearances by phone or recordings are not allowed. Council members are prohibited by state law from taking action on, commenting, or discussing a matter raised by a member of the public, even if asked to do so by a member of the public, so long as the subject discussed by the speaker is not listed as a specific agenda item for council's consideration for discussion and legal action. At the conclusion of public appearances, the council may ask the city manager to review a matter or place a matter on a future agenda. I've got a couple of cards here, one for a specific item that I'm going to take but a couple that are more just general public appearances. So I'm going to start here. Uh, my first comment card is Leroy Eifler. Please come forward, state your name and city of residence. You have three minutes to address the council. Thanks for letting me speak tonight. I'm uh, from Litchfield Park, but recently moved to business from Phoenix into Tempe. Uh, we've partnered with Gila Medical Clinics. We have Medical Advancement Centers of Arizona. Uh, we provide uh, no-cost health care to citizens through clinical research. Uh, we currently study Alzheimer's disease, COPD, as well as asthma in severe cases. Uh, we can provide drugs at no cost and treatment to people that are uninsured or underinsured. Uh, we just wanted to tell the council that we appreciate the opportunity to speak and that we're really excited to be part of the community and to benefit people in any way we can. Uh, we can be reached at mccoa-health.com. So if anybody's interested in participating, uh, there's opportunities for free vaccines. There's opportunities for free medications, most of which are already FDA approved and not uh, strictly research. Um, Dr. Uh, C. Fuentes, who runs Gila Medical Clinics, has been a great partner for us. And we have also have uh, Dr. Houdin, who did operate a practice for uh, nearly three decades in the city of Tempe before closing down and retiring to do uh, work with us full time. Um, that's all I want to say, and I really appreciate Charles' time and letting us uh, come into the city. We looked for a long partnership with you all. Wonderful. Appreciate it. Welcome to Tempe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker I have is Peter South. Please come forward. State your name and city of residence. You have three minutes to address the council. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and city council members. I am Peter South, and I am the owner of iTrip Vacations. We're short-term rental property managers. I reside in Phoenix, but I do represent uh, several owners of homes in the Tempe area. I also um, serve as an executive board member with Arizonans for Responsible Tourism, AZRT, and what we are is a statewide coalition uh, that we advocate for short-term rentals for owners and for hosts. And I've already spoken with uh, several of you, including Tom over there, about uh, short-term rentals uh, and the crafting of the ordinance. And um, we at AZRT believe that it's a very good beginning uh, for regulation of short-term rentals within the city. Um, short-term rentals are an important part of the city of Tempe as people from all over the world come and create amazing memories here, bringing their families back time and time again. And these tourists, they also stimulate our local businesses. Um, additionally to patronizing the restaurants, shops, and other businesses, these tourists provide a great tax benefit to the city. Um, in the last quarter, my six rentals in the city of Tempe have generated over $10,000 in tax revenue for the city of Tempe. Um, and that's not even counting what people are spending out and about the, the town. And this is happening in hundreds of rentals across the city. Um, one thing I would like to address is that many people I know are concerned about sex offenders. Um, I've seen it in the forum that that's one of the hot topic uh, and background checks at the rentals. First off, there's no evidence suggesting that there are any sex offenders utilizing short-term rentals. Mostly, people are more worried about garbage and parking and noise in short-term rentals. Um, but we do understand the importance of keeping our neighborhood safe and um, requiring owners to complete background checks on all guests is just not practical and nearly impossible to enforce. And it also puts the city of Tempe at odds with other cities such as Scottsdale, who has already adopted the booking guest check policy only. So we do support a background check on the booking guest only, um, as presented in the, the ordinance uh, before you. Um, as short-term rentals owners and hosts, we care deeply about our city, and we, only, we want to have amazing neighborhoods for families to create memories, and we want to ensure our houses are the best in the neighborhood and have the best guests. And we at AZRT have developed several tools to help educate 
guests and how we expect them to act in our neighborhoods. We at AZRT have expressed our willingness to partner with the city and assist you in educating owners on best practices for rentals to ensure that the quality of life in our neighborhoods continues to be one of the most sought after in the state. So we do, we support the adoption of the ordinance presented. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to address the council this evening? If so, please come forward and state your name and city of residence for the record. Is there anyone? Please get my attention. Yes, sir. Please come forward, state your name and city of residence. You have three minutes to address the council. It's my first time here, so uh, I wasn't aware of the speaker cards. Sorry about that. No worries. My name's Rodney Krenz. Uh, yeah. Rodney Krenz. I'm a Tempe resident since 1994. Um, I work here in real estate. And uh, while short-term rentals is not my forte, I did have a lot of concerns when I looked through this proposal. Um, I was wondering what kind of data the city has in terms of, you know, how many short-term rentals we really have and, you know, what's the complaint ratio on those rentals? Um, you know, my concern is that perhaps a few uh, things that have gone poorly recently are affecting thousands of other uh, short-term rental owners. So, you know, I, I would want to know, you know, what kind, of, what kind of data we have that backs this up. If there's, um, it, you know, what percentage of short-term rentals are... Um, like, how does that play into the number of uh, residential properties in this town? And then how many complaints do we have on those? Are we, are we talking that there's like a tenth of a percent of complaints, or is it, is it 1%? And, and if so, what are those complaints? You know, on, on the news, we get to hear about the horrible things that happen, but um, I, I guess I'd like to see some data, you know, from the police department, some data from the city. Um, I, I'm also concerned about their, you know, the regulatory permit fee. So um, it, it's my understanding, you know, a, a transaction privilege tax for a rental is, uh, it has been $50. And I believe you can add multiple properties to that with, um, you know, with just like another code for each property, property code. So I'm, I'm wondering why they would want to charge a $250 permit to somebody who maybe wants to, uh, you know, rent out their house for two weeks while they go on vacation or something like that. So I, I feel like that permit fee is really high for the, you know, the average person that uses this product. So do, do we have any data on this that, that can be shared with the community? So uh, this item actually is on for 8B1, only for first hearing. Uh, there'll be no vote actually taken on this item, but I know Tom Dunsing and Lisette Camacho are here this evening, and they can come up and give a short presentation to talk a little bit about this. And if there's questions that are unanswered, we can get, definitely get those answered prior to the second public hearing where the council would take a final vote. So. Okay, so that'll be later this evening. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. okay, absolutely. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much for your time. You Appreciate got it. it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the city council this evening? If so, please get my attention. All right, seeing none, I'll close that portion of the hearing. I'll move on to item number seven, which is the consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be considered as a group and will be enacted with one motion by the city council unless an item is removed for separate consideration. Members of the public may remove public hearing items for separate consideration. Public hearing items are designated as public hearing item at the beginning of the item title. Council members may remove any item for separate consideration or to declare a conflict of interest. If a council member would like to declare a conflict at this time, the city clerk will provide the council member with the disclosure form. If you wish to speak on a public hearing item, please fill out a speaker card and submit your completed card to the city clerk prior to the agenda item coming forward for public discussion. I will call your name when it is your turn for public comment. 
I've got one here this evening uh, for item 8B1 for Mr. Buss, so I'll make sure to call you when that item comes up. The consent agenda, though, this evening is listed as miscellaneous items, 7A1 through 7A5. Awards of bids and contracts, items 7B1 through 7B15. And resolutions, items 7C1 through 7C8. Any agenda item designated as public hearing item can be removed by a member of the public for separate consideration. If anyone in the audience would like a public hearing item removed, please get my attention now. All right. Hearing none. I will go ahead and see, Kara, were there any comments received from the public wishing to address the council on a consent agenda public hearing item? None at this time, Mr. Mayor. All right, sounds good. Council, any other items that you'd like to remove from the consent agenda for separate consideration? Okay, I'd like to remove one, which is just item 7C4. Last question I'll ask, uh, Kara, is uh, do we have Councilmember Hodge or Councilmember Keating online? No, we do not. Okay, just wanted to make sure I wasn't calling their names on each individual vote. All right, so with that said, I will ask for a motion from the council to approve the consent agenda item with the exception of item 7C4, which has been removed for separate consideration. So moved. Seconded by, first, uh, motion by Vice Mayor Adams, seconded by Council Member Navarro. Please vote. And that item passes five to zero with Council Member Hodge and Council Member Keating absent. All right, next up, I'm going to go here to item 7C4, which is what I pulled, which is to adopt a resolution to accept and disperse donations from Team ASA for the purchase of playground equipment at Clark Park. Just wanted to let everyone know in the audience, Team ASA is a volunteer-run 501c3 whose mission is to enable individuals with different abilities the opportunity to participate in recreational and social activities. As a result of this generous community support of their annual polar bear plunge at the Lakes of Tempe, which I know myself and several council members, uh, past, present, and I'm sure future will participate in, <laughs> they are donating adaptive playground equipment to the Clark Park playground renovation, which was the presentation that Sean Wagner gave earlier. The Musical Garden will provide musicians of all abilities multi-sensory experiences. So I just wanted to make sure that I pointed that out and wanted to thank uh, our longtime employee, Denise Rentschler, for all of her stewardship of Team ASA through all these years. Uh, what a great thing. And we're so excited about the Clark Park remodel, but we're really excited to make sure that it's truly inclusive and that everyone can fully enjoy this renovation. So with that said, um, is everyone from council any additional comments or on that item? If not, I'll take a motion. Sorry. It's been moved by Council Second. Navarro, seconded by Vice Mayor Adams. Please vote. And that item passes five to zero with Council Member Hodge and Council Member Keating absent. Uh, Council Member Garland said she can't wait to see me jump in that water again. January is right around the corner, Council Member Garland, and I'm going in. The next section on the non-consent agenda, oh, actually, hold on one second here. Went a little too far forward in the agenda. Item number eight is the non-consent agenda. All items listed on the non-consent agenda will be considered separately. Agenda items scheduled for introduction and first public hearing will be heard, but will not be voted upon at this meeting. Agenda items scheduled for second public hearing and final adoption will be voted upon tonight. Council members who may have a conflict of interest may abstain from voting on a matter, and the city clerk will provide the council members with the disclosure form. First up, we have 8A, which is miscellaneous items, bids, contracts, and resolutions. The first item under the section is 8A1, which is to adopt resolution number R2022.1078 relating to resolution R2022.1079, which called for a special election to be held in and for the city of Tempe, Arizona on May 16th, 2023, submitting to the, to the qualified electors thereof the questions of authorizing the general plan amendment, zoning map amendment, and the development and disposition agreement for the Tempe Entertainment District contingent upon petition certification and sufficiency. Council, any comments or discussion on this item? All right, hearing none, I'll look for a motion. Moved by Council Member Navarro to a second. Second. Seconded by Vice Mayor Adams, please vote. 
And that item passes five to zero with Councilmember Hodge and Councilmember Keating absent. The next item under the section is 8A2, which is to approve the utilization of one-year State of Arizona contracts with Fischl Company, Graybar Electric Incorporated, Level 7 Technologies LLC, Aspen Technologies, and Premise One Incorporated for data and telecommunications cabling, fiber optic installation, and repair services in city buildings and streets in alignment with the capital improvement plans for traffic, sewer, and water projects. Council, any comments or discussion? Hearing none, do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Vice Mayor Adams, seconded by Council Member Chin. Please vote. And that item passes five to zero with Council Member Hodge and Council Member Keating absent. For anyone in the room who's concerned about the temperature, <coughs> I just heard the air conditioning kick on, so you should be more comfortable shortly. Thank you, Tom and Rosa. There you go. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. The next item under the section is 8A3, which is to approve a one-year contract renewal with West Coast Arborist Incorporated for tree trimming services for trees in rights of way, parks, and downtown Tempe, and vegetation management in the River Bottom, Indian Bend Wash, and Lopiano Preserve Area. Council, any comments or discussion? Been moved by Council Member Garland. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Chin. Please vote. That item passes five to zero with Councilmember Hodge and Councilmember Keating absent. The next item under the section is 8A4, which is to award a construction manager at risk contract to MGC Contractors Incorporated for the Wellhead Treatment Well 7 Well Rehabilitation GMP1 project located at 925 South Smith Road. Council, any comments or discussion? Hearing none, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilmember Navarro, seconded by Vice Mayor Adams. Please vote. That item passes five to zero with Councilmember Hodge and Councilmember Keating absent. The last item under the section is 8A5, which is to award a construction manager at risk contract to Caliente Construction Incorporated for the Tempe Fire Medical Rescue Fire Station number two project located at 3025 South Hardy Drive. Council, any comments or discussion? Hearing none, do I have a motion? Second. Been moved by Councilmember Chin and seconded by Councilmember Navarro. Please vote. That item also passes five to zero with Council Member Hodge and Council Member Keating absent. The next section on the non-consent agenda is ordinances and items for introduction and first hearing. These items will be read and introduced tonight, but no votes will be taken. The second hearing and vote for these items is scheduled for January 5th, 2023. Once again, item 8B, ordinances items for introduction and first hearing. The first one is 8B1, which is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance to amend the Tempe City Code by adding a new article to Chapter 16A relating to regulating short-term rentals and vacation rentals. Looking to staff, I see Tom and Lisette coming up right now. There were a couple of, couple of comments, so I see if you could give maybe a, a short presentation this evening, just for public transparency. Yes, thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Good evening, Tom Dunsing, Deputy City Manager, joined by Lizette Camacho, Financial Services Director. And we're here tonight to request the Council hold a, the first public hearing on to adopt an ordinance relative to short-term rentals. And I'll say a couple words. We've got a very short presentation tonight. Um, First off, this is a very interesting process. This legislation that was crafted in the most recent legislative session was actually, it was helped crafted by representatives of short-term rentals. And so the, with the goal of having these operate safely within our community for the enjoyment of everybody. One of the other things that we did with the ordinance that's before you this evening is we also looked at other cities um, in the Valley. Um, we, were, we were cognizant of, of property owners having multiple residents or multiple homes in multiple cities dealing with multiple regulations. And so one of the things that we wanted to do is, is craft something um, that allows us to take full advantage of 1168 yet be consistent with other cities um, within the valley. Real quick, um, quality of, of the neighborhoods is really kind of the, the theme here and it pretty much aligns with um, the council priorities you see in front of you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. The next two slides I'll be covering. Uh, since we, we presented at the October 27th work study session, we've held two public meetings. One virtual meeting on November 14th with 40 attendees one in-person meeting on November 16th with 11 attendees. 
We also had a survey posted on Tempe Forum from November 2nd to November 30th. The survey was also available at both public meetings. Um, the feedback we received at the, at the public meetings is consistent with the result of the survey. We did receive 316 responses to the survey with 230 respondents providing an address with the majority located in Tempe. As you can see in this slide, 81% supported a license requirement and assessing a fee of $250. 82% supported neighbor notification and requiring the emergency contact to respond to complaints and emergencies. 88% supported requiring liability insurance of $500,000. 69% supported sex offender background check. 84% supported suspension of a license for up to 12 months for certain violations of the short-term rental ordinance. 78% supported imposing civil penalty of 1,000 per month for failure to obtain a license, and 79% supported imposing a civil penalty for verified violations. The proposed ordinance before you tonight fully implements the provisions of Senate Bill 1168. It does include a requirement to obtain a business license to operate a short-term rental in the city of Tempe and assess that business license fee of $250. It requires neighbor notification, liability insurance of at least 500,000. This requirement for the liability insurance will be met if the, um, the short-term rental is advertised and the transaction is um, through a, an online lodging marketplace that provides equal or greater liability insurance coverage. The emergency contact person is required to respond to emergencies within 30 minutes for emergencies that require public safety personnel. Um, the response can be by phone, via text also, or within 24 hours for non-emergency complaints. There is a requirement for a sex offender background check of booking guests only, and this requirement will be met or waived if the online lodging marketplace performs the background check. And also, it includes some penalties, including license suspension and the escalating civil penalties for violations of the short-term rental ordinance. So Mary and Council, before I give the next steps, I'll address a couple of the comments that were up here tonight. Um, first is the fees. Um, we very simply um, went and calculated the cost of being able to track the short-term rentals um, that we anticipate um, will we'll seek a license. Um, that cost is well over $250 per license per year. Um, we're we're um, state statute limits to, to up to 250, so that's what we're recommending um, tonight. Um, the other um, comment um, that we heard was the data on short-term rentals, police responses, and the simple answer to that is we simply don't know. We don't have a mechanism that requires short-term rentals to be able to register with the city until we adopt this ordinance that's before you this evening. Um, we have voluntary signups, um, we, we passed a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, um, it was what, two years ago, I think, and um, the requirement for short-term rentals to register, the issue with that is it's completely voluntary. There's nothing we can do if they don't register. So right now we've got about 300 registered. Um, there's been different estimates of the numbers of short-term rentals in Tempe, but you know, between 1,300 and 2,000. So this is simply for us to be able to get a handle on the short-term rentals that are in our neighborhoods um, to be able to sign up, then we can start tracking the data. So next steps, um, what you see here is, is sort of a list of the process we've, we've gone through, um, quite an extensive public outreach. Um, we're here tonight, um, December 15th, for the first public hearing. Um, we anticipate um, the second public hearing being at our upcoming January 5th regular council meeting with assuming that it is adopted on January 5th, the implementation or the effective date of the ordinance would be the beginning of March. And with that, we'll answer any questions. And if there are no questions, Mayor, we'd ask you to open the public hearing. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Lisette. Appreciate it. Uh, any other council members, any comments or questions? Thanks. Vice so, Mayor Epps. Just wanted to thank you for, for your help and um, for doing your due diligence with this matter. It's very important to a lot of residents. So thanks thank you. so and, much. And I would like to give a shout out to Arizonans for Responsible Tourism. 
they represent short-term rental owners and they have absolutely offered every step of the way to be a resource and we will we'll take advantage of that for sure. So Mr. Peter South um, spoke to you earlier this evening. Very good, thank you. Thank you. All right, wonderful, thank you so much. I've got one card here also regarding item 8B1. It's from Charles Buss. Please come forward, state your name and city of residence. You have three minutes to address the council. Thank you. My name is Charles Buss. I'm a longtime Tempe resident. Um, thank you for letting me speak on this issue. Um, I am an activist, as I said, long-term Tempe resident. Um, I also have a vacation rental myself that is a part of my own home that I live in, uh, without which I would not be able to afford my living expenses. Um, I have issue with a couple of items on, these, on this proposal. Um, I think it's great that there should be a public database to reach the owner or designated manager of a vacation rental. And I have no problem with that. Um, as a matter of fact, living where I've lived for so long, my neighbors, most of them already have my phone number. And uh, in the years I've been doing vacation rental, uh, vacation rental, um, there's never been an incident, never. I guess it's the advantage of running it on your own property. You don't tolerate anyone <laughs> misbehaving. Um, but. I, I think there's a little too much emphasis on this idea of sending out a notification to the neighbors in the sense that um, a lot of times your neighbor is on a one-year lease, for instance, and as soon as they move away, the letter that I have mailed out to them gets thrown in the trash. The next person on the one-year lease doesn't know how to reach me or you know whoever's operating a short-term rental. Um, so I think there ought to be more emphasis on how to locate the uh, city's website where you can find out that information, and it's always there. It doesn't get thrown out in the recycling trash from a letter. The other issue I have is the sex offender uh, background check. I'm not sure how this ever got in there. Um, I have not heard of any data that sex offenders are renting vacation rentals and then committing their horrendous crimes again in, in someone's community. I think there's a stigma with being a short, a, a, uh, sorry, a stigma with being a sex offender that they usually are relegated to lower paying jobs. They don't have the money to take a lot of vacations and stay in expensive vacation rentals. So I feel like the state legislature kind of missed that mark in giving the cities that authorization to do that which leads me to my last points, which are, I think there ought to be a focus on two other issues instead, which is um, uh, the, um, the parties that happened at some of these short-term rentals. And I think a smart thing that the uh, legislature ought to consider would be a limitation on the number of visitors of the rental guests, meaning if your space is rented for two people, as mine is, you shouldn't be allowed to have more than two visitors it's rated for six, no more than six visitors. And that way, if the police are summoned for a party, they're in trouble, the guests and the owner are in trouble for another issue, which is too many visitors. Um, you know, we, we really shouldn't have all these people visiting a vacation rental. And um, I was trying to think of my last point here. Was, I give you another 30 seconds, so yeah. Yeah, go yeah for it. I was trying to think of what you my last it. point was. I was a little distracted there. <laughs> um, oh, the, I thought the state legislature also ought to be considering the future limiting the number of vacation rentals that a person or a corporation can have. My observation, since I'm in this business and I research my competition, is every month I see more and more units being operated by corporations, many of which are not even a part of our state. I thought the original spirit of a vacation rental was a way to make a little extra money for where you live, you know, to help pay your living expenses. Instead, I feel like our community is being trashed by out-of-state corporations that have hundreds of rentals, they have no interest in our community, and they're taking away um, uh, space that could be long-term rentals or places that people could buy and live in. So okay. that's all I had to say. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, much. Mr. Busk. Really appreciate it. And I know staff's got your comments as well, so thank you. All right. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to address the council on item A, B, 8B1 tonight? Please get my attention. Okay, seeing none, just want to reiterate, the second and final public hearing on this item is scheduled for January 5th, 2023. 
The next item under the section is 8B2, which is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance amending Chapter 12, Article 4, Division 2 of the Tempe City Code relating to stormwater retention by amending Section 73, drainage permits, and adding Section 74, charges. Council, any comments or questions for staff on this item? All right. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this item this evening? All right, then I'll close the public hearing. All right, just want to reiterate then, second and final public hearing on this item is scheduled for January 5th, 2023. The next item under the section is 8B3, which is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the granting of a utility easement agreement to Arizona Public Service Company over certain city-owned property identified by APN 132-27-355, which is 117 East 5th Street, the City Hall parking garage, and authorizing the mayor or his designee to execute an easement agreement and related documents. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the City Council on this item? Seeing that, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, the second and final public hearing on this item is scheduled for January 5th, 2023. The next item under the section is 8B4, which is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the granting of a power distribution easement to Salt River Project Agricultural Improvement and Power District over certain publicly owned right-of-way located on Alameda Drive, east of 52nd Street, and authorizing the mayor or his designee to execute an easement agreement and related documents. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the City Council on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? Nope, oh, first first hearing, yep. thank you. Okay, just want to reiterate, second and final public hearing on this item is scheduled for January 5th, 2023. The last item under the section is 8B5, which is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the granting of two power distribution easements to Salt River Project Agricultural Improvement and Power District over certain city-owned land located at 2200 West Alameda Drive, which is Tempe Diablo Stadium, and authorizing the mayor or his designee to execute easement agreements and related documents. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the City Council on this item? All right, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? Hearing none, the second and final public hearing on this item is scheduled for January 5th, 2023. Next up here, we have ordinances and items for second hearing and final adoption. These items were first read and introduced on December 1st, 2022, and votes on these items will take place tonight. The first item under the section is 8C1, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance for a zoning map amendment and approve a final subdivision plat for the Caliendo residence located at 1100 East Knox Road. The applicant for the zoning map amendment is Birch and Cracciolo, PA, and the applicant for the final subdivision plat is Gilbert Land Surveying, PLC. Is there any presentation on this item? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this item? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? Motion, it's been moved by Councilmember Navarro. Do I have a second? Seconded by Councilmember Garland. Please vote. And that item passes five to zero with Councilmember Hodge and Councilmember Keating absent. The next item under the section is 8C2, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the abandonment of a water line easement located on the west side of Harl Avenue and north of the Mineral Road alignment. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this item? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? Been moved by Vice Mayor Adams. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Navarro. Please vote. <coughs> that item also passes five to zero with Councilmember Hodge and Councilmember Keating absent. The last item under the section is 8C3, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a development and disposition agreement with the Tempe Coalition for Affordable Housing Incorporated, a nonprofit corporation for vacant city-owned property located at 1014 East Curry Road, Tempe, in order to convey property, covenants, deeds, and other related documents necessary to affect such conveyance and related transactions. Council, any questions for staff on this item? Anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, council, was there a motion? motion it's been moved by Councilmember Navarro, seconded by Councilmember Chin. Please vote. 
That item passes five to zero with Councilmember Hodge and Councilmember Keating absent. That brings us to item number nine, current events, council announcements, and future agenda items. I will call upon the council members for their comments. First up this evening, as always, we go in alphabetical order and I will turn to Vice Mayor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have a few announcements this evening. We all know that a Tempe has some of the most generous and kind-hearted residents in the Valley. And we often see people uh, asking for help on the, our city corners uh, roadways. And instead of giving, uh, you know, like money out of your change holder, we're asking you to help fund a nonprofit or faith-based group that provides the population with critical services like substance abuse and treatment and housing. You could also volunteer for those groups. Uh, serving meals or being a mentor is a great place to start. You can volunteer. You can also volunteer for Tempe's with Tempe Hope team. No experience is needed, and I, I know some people that are doing that, and they really are enjoying it. So that's uh, we would ask you to do that. Our, my second announcement this evening is about dogs. One of my favorite uh, subject matters. Uh, the Maricopa County Shelter needs dog walkers. And they, and, and they can, you can do a lot of different things there, but they really need volunteers to help out. And we know a lot of children um, and sometimes adults want puppies for Christmas. And instead of buying a purebred puppy, uh, consider adopting a rescue. And right now they're waiving the adoption fees. So that would be really, if you guys want, anybody wants to get a dog, go down there and grab your dog and it's free. And uh, so please, please consider that and, uh, and helping out our, our, our little pets. My third announcement is I want to thank uh, Tempe PD. Um, recently, they, they took, um, this week, they took 290,000 fentanyl pills off our streets. And with the fentanyl pills, they're only uh, $2 a piece. So this is like really out of control. Just think in one week, 290,000 off our streets. So, um, and the, it's been called the deadliest drug threat our nation has ever account, encountered. So I wanna thank those officers who were able to get the, those drugs off our streets. And I really want to continue to encourage our parents to talk to our children to be educated about it and, and tell them to not touch this. This is a very dangerous substance. Our drug do dogs at the, at the border can't even be trained to smell it because it will kill them. So that's how bad this is. So please, please talk to your children about not using this very dangerous drug. Finally, I want to congratulate Jill Rasmussen and Donna Sullivan Hancock. I've worked both with both of those women for Jill over three decades, and uh, um, she's just a great person, and so is Donna. I worked with her very closely in engineering when I was Deputy Public Works Director. And they're both class acts, and I wish them the best in their um, future plans. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all of my announcements. Thank you, Vice Mayor Adams. Really appreciate it. Next up, I will call upon Councilmember Chin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, no major announcement. Seeing as this is the last meeting of the year for us, I just wanted to wish everyone a very safe and peaceful holiday season. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Next up, Councilmember Garland. I see my, my slides already up, so thank you so much, Eddie. Um, <clears throat> so we are looking for hoodies and socks to be <coughs> donated for... Um, our high school and middle school students in the city of Tempe, we have a great <coughs> program through Tempe Community Council that was set up and organized by a Tempe leadership class. It's called Threads. They're looking for hoodies and socks. <coughs> if you can donate, that would be wonderful. They would will love to take those. At Tempe Public Library, you can drop them off, Tempe Fire <coughs> Medical Rescue Administration Office, Tempe Elementary School District, or the Tempe YMCA, Tempe Union High School District are all accepting the donations, and they're taking them through January 12th. So if you can donate, we would absolutely love if you could donate um, a new hoodie and new socks if you can. If you want some more information on that, you can go to Tempe Community Council forward, uh, Tempe Community Council org forward slash threads with a Z and not an S. And that's all I have. Wonderful. Oh, I think I have Council Member Hodges. Oh, please. All right. Council Member Hodge is not here um, today. But she asked if I would um, send you her warm wishes for a holiday season. 
um, for a beautiful holiday season. So on behalf of um, Council Member Verdetta Hodge and her sweet mom in that picture, she's wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Next up, Council Member Navarro. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just had a conversation on uh, talking with the community uh, over at the waterfront uh, high rise, which was right there on the north side of the lake off of Rill Road and the 202. And it was a great turnout. A lot of people actually got to see the view from that area, which was kind of neat because kind of showcasing what the development has done in that lake and kind of looking at some of the product that's there. This room, for instance, has a great uh, resource for the people that, are, that work within the building to have a community uh, breakout room, uh, teaching education. It also had a kitchen and some other sitting areas and other activities like pool table and whatnot. Um, but it's, it, it showcased, you know, kind of those type of uh, buildings and structures and amenities that have been offered um, to uh, businesses and residents um, in and around the community. And there was a great conversation about what we're doing uh, around the lake, what type of development, what are we doing within the uh, water itself and water safety and what things are uh, potentially coming down the road in conversations to make uh, that area safe. So I think it was a great turnout, um, good information. Uh, as always with these community um, uh, conversations, we'd like to take back information uh, and uh, also try to implement it in stuff that we're trying to do as a council. So good feedback from everybody there. And I want to thank everybody for, uh, for coming out for that event. Uh, the next thing is uh, live music. Just trying to mention up some live music that we're having in and around Tempe. Uh, this is going to be at uh, Tempe Marketplace on December 16th. We have Remy Goody. Uh, it's a folk indie jam, jam band. On December 17th, Frosty and the Silvertones. December 23rd, Jade Road. And December 30th, Come Back Bobby, and that's a Bobby Holly tribute band. So a lot of good events uh, happening at the marketplace and in around town, because that's just one of the locations, so kind of look for that stuff. But just get out and support live music, and appreciate all the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Navarro. All right, I've got uh, three announcements this evening. The first one is uh, in partnership with AARP and the Older Adults Technology Services, otherwise known as OATS. And in the spirit of lifelong learning in Tempe, the city's Office of Education, Career, and Family Services invites you to the Escalante Center at noon this Friday, which is, of course, tomorrow, to celebrate its seniors that are participating in the Digital Skills Ready Program. So remember, please RSVP to Heather Hamilton at 480-350-5556 if you're interested in coming to learn more about the programs and also to congratulate some incredibly smart seniors who are doing great work right here in our community. Second announcement here is just talking about that the city of Tempe is working towards being designated as a certified autism city. So two years ago, Tempe's Community Services Department took the important first step towards becoming an autism certified city by earning the Certified Autism Center designation through the International Board of Credentialing and Continuing Education Standards. The CAC designation celebrated the Community Services Department's commitment to a training and certification process to better understand and serve autistic individuals and others with sensory needs. Many city parks, along with the Tempe Public Library, Tempe History Museum, and Tempe Town Lake, received on-site reviews to provide insights, recommendations, and sensory guides to help enhance the visitor experience, especially for those with sensory sensitivities. Understanding that the Community Services Department's accreditation was the first step, the Adaptive Recreation Team expanded their efforts to include additional city departments, including Fire Medical Rescue, Police, Human Resources, Employee Department, and the Office of Education, Career, and Family Services, KidZone. Employee Development has incorporated autism awareness training in its onboarding process for all new hires. Over 400 employees in the previously mentioned departments have completed this training. And as a result of these efforts, the City of Tempe as an organization recently earned its autism accreditation. Our next step is to expand beyond city departments and partner with local businesses, tourism, and other service providers in our community with the goal of becoming an autism certified city in 2023. And my last announcement of the evening 
is a letter, and, and we talk about very much up here sort of the spirit of Christmas and holiday goodwill, uh, and this was a letter that I received from a longtime resident, a longtime friend of mine, and I will read her name at the end of this, but it's a uh, beautiful letter, and I wanted to make sure that I read this into the record this evening. So it says, Dear Mayor Woods, our son Hayden, who is now 12, was diagnosed on the autism spectrum at the age of three. Being nonverbal until the age of five, his father and I have sought all the resources we have locally and at the state level in terms of therapies and in-school and out-of-school supports to help our son develop his skills and interpersonal engagement abilities as we travel this unique and special life journey together. Along the way, we have met many amazing people and organizations in the community who have been helpful working with us to bring joy, understanding, and opportunity to Hayden's life experience. As a result, this has inspired my advocacy to enhance understanding, awareness, and opportunity for children and families living with autism, including through my board work on the Mesa Regional Foundation for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, which is and will continue to be a priority vocation in my community work. Three years ago, we decided to start our daughter in karate at the Martial Arts Academy of Tang Soo Do of Arizona, which is located right here in Tempe. Shortly thereafter, we requested whether the instructors might be willing to offer our son individualized classes given his sensory needs. This request was welcomed without hesitation. And little by little, Hayden's ability to focus and enjoy this adaptive extracurricular activity grew, even maintaining through the pains of the pandemic with classes via Zoom. As a result of the willingness to work with our son and such kindness and thoughtful approaches to his instruction, together we were able to expand Hayden's desire to participate in activities outside of home, therapies, and school for the first time. Since then, Hayden's love of karate and Tang Soo Do has only increased, with just recently competing at his first karate tournament last weekend. This brought him and us tremendous joy to experience his courage to perform in front of judges for the first time and his special recognized achievement. As a result of Hayden's experience at the school, parents of other students who have siblings with special needs have also requested to participate with the masters now offering a special class for kiddos with special needs. How wonderful is this? Both masters and co-owners of, co of the studio, Ian and Stephanie Larson, and you can find them at www.maatsdaz.com slash child hyphen safety, have been truly amazing to our family and to those they serve in their business and in the Tang Soo Do community. We are truly lucky to have such special people here with their business in Tempe. If by chance there is an opportunity to recognize them for the good they do and impact they're making, I wanted to make this request and let you know how much they have meant to us. Thank you for your consideration and also for your service to the Tempe community. Sincerely, Alana and James Langdon, Tempe residents. So I wanted to see if we have the folks from that wonderful business here today, and if they can, can they please raise their hands? Yeah. Wonderful. What I would love to do is see if I could have Ian and Stephanie join me down here in front for a photo, and I'd like to have the council join me down front as well. Let's do this. Sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, good to get you guys there. Thanks. Sir. I'm in the middle here. Absolutely. Uh, there we go. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. And right. before you go, before everybody goes, mm -hmm. Alana, I see you in the back. I, will, I would love for you to join us up here for a photo if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Alana Langdon is the person who wrote that letter, that beautiful letter. Right next to them, you perfect. Yes, and with you. Okay. 
Sure, absolutely. You got it. We'll get right, perfect. I will wait right here. I could have tried. If I would have gone home, right? Oh, yeah, I could have gone home. It's okay. Home like a quarry. What are you going to do? What's happening here? Oh, is it? Are you going to take him down? Are you going to take him down? Take him down. Take him down. <laughs> Go take what's down. This is going to happen. For the record, just a little known fact I actually took karate as a child, but only advanced to green belt status. So, <laughs> But I haven't done it in quite some time, so I stand no chance against either of you. So. Yeah, don't do it, Corey. Don't do it. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Joel's been waiting for this for since 2008, since we first got started together. Stay tired, man. Take him down. <laughs> All right. All right. They're going to do some hand moves on him. I feel like he's trying to like, take me down for a left. Let's, let's stay here. I feel like I can like, sweep the leg. Like. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. And since I can't think of a better way to close this year than that letter from Alana, and those wonderful people who just came up here. I'm going to go ahead and wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you for joining us this year. We will see you all in 2023. Have a wonderful evening. We are adjourned.